Welcome to our series of Chinese horror movies explained. In a country where horror movies are heavily regulated and censored, filmmakers need to find clever ways to get around regulations. And in this series, we explore how they did it. If you like this and are interested in seeing more, please remember to like and subscribe. And if you know of a Chinese horror film you want us to look at, leave a comment below. And an obvious warning, but this is pretty much a spoiler filled video. Watch at your own peril. In this episode, we go to 2016, a massive year for Chinese horror movies, and look at the awesomely titled Ghost Hospital, also known by a weird French type name, Karim Penyu, or however you say that. This classic <laughs> is directed by Gou Jun Yin, who is known for this film, and stars Bianca Bai, Chang Si Li, Ka Ying Lo, and Pan Meng. With a huge score of 2.6 on Dolban, let's settle in and see what this is about. In Chinese horror movies, the words mental illness are thrown around more than a basketball at an NBA game. Like most of these horror films, it stops being a horror film after about 30 minutes and then turns into a thriller. But the first 30 minutes of horror are the type of horror you've come to expect already. Weird ghost faces, hallucinations, demented killers, and a crazy hospital patient. That's pretty much the first third summed up. Let's take a quick look at what this movie is about. A woman, An, takes her lover, Guan Tian, to the hospital to get his leg cast removed. Her daughter from a previous marriage, Xuan Xuan, tags along for the trip, not wanting to be left home alone, which makes sense since she looks to be about seven years old, and who leaves a seven-year-old child at home alone? After leaving Guan Tian with the nurse, Ahn falls asleep and awakes in a panic. Frantically, she searches for her boyfriend, not her daughter who has mysteriously gone missing, and discovers the orthopedic ward in the hospital doesn't exist. For you see, this is a ghost hospital. Well, not really. It's a hospital that's about to shut down and this is its last day of operation. Which is good, as a quick tour around the hospital shows how awful this building is. Her panic attack attracts the attention of the head nurse after she bursts into the nurse's private room. It's around this time the words mental illness start getting thrown around as the nurse calls the security guard, who then calls the hospital director, who then calls the hospital psychiatrist. As she freaks out more and more, Two mysterious knife-wielding cloaked figures start hunting her, but she gets rescued by a man she met at the start of the film and awakes, again, on a hospital bed. It's here where the movie takes its turn and we find out that this man has orchestrated the whole event to steal money off Ahn. She runs a company that just went public, so she's under a lot of stress, but is apparently now flush with cash. She refuses to give him money and escapes from the man and the two other killers who take off their masks to reveal they are the security guard and the nurse from the fake orthopedic ward. Then, in a nod to the Jodie Foster movie Panic Room, she holds up in a secure storeroom in the basement of the hospital. Oh, it's also worth mentioning at this point that she has been reunited with Xuan Xuan, her daughter. So she's locked in a panic room with three crazed people after her, now threatening to kill her invalid boyfriend because he's now in a wheelchair. What is going on in this movie? Well, 
Well, sorry to disappoint you, but this one isn't really a horror film. The payoff here is that the boyfriend is actually the mastermind. Yep, it's a kidnapping and extortion plotline. Ahn can't believe that Guan Tian was lying to her, like she's the first woman in the world who has ever been tricked by a lover. He wants her money, and he wants to kill her and her daughter. Yes, this adorable, if annoying, little girl. But Ahn is smart, because she has a way to protect her money from being extorted, and she uses it to her advantage. She's also helped out by the creepy guy we meet at the start of the film, who is the same guy who looks after Xuanzhen when she's flipping out in the hospital. I really don't understand what this guy wants, as she accuses him of wanting more money for a deposit, but a deposit for what exactly? Anyway, they have a happy ending where they get together and live happily ever after. I'm torn about this film. It's obviously not good, but I'm not sure whether to class it as a bad horror or a bad thriller. But since the poster went with the horror theme and the word ghost in the title, well, we'll class it as a horror flick. There is potential here though. The hospital setting is awesome. And yes, it is overdone in the horror genre, but it's well done here. It also has a proper explanation for it being empty too, which was welcomed. There are also no obvious plot holes. The storylines are tied up satisfactorily enough, but I think the issue here is that it wanted to be a horror film, but didn't know how to create a valid second half. So it turned into a thriller, which wasn't there at the start. How very Korean of it. Watch out for the next Chinese Horror Movie Explained, where we will take a look at The Strange House. Subscribe to ensure you get an alert when it comes out. Thank you for watching.